好的，那么接下来呢，我们继续来讲第三部分，也就是四六题的讲解。那么这两部分呢，通常都是跟 lecture 里面专业知识有关的。我们先来看一下第十六题的第四题。那么我们在做这种题的时候啊，一定要先在阅读材料中找出我们要解释的名词是什么。我们先来阅读一下材料。When people work in groups to perform a task, individual group members may feel less motivated to contribute, since no one person. Is held directly responsible for completing the task. The result is that people may not work as hard or accomplish as much as they would if they were working alone and their individual output were being measured. This decrease in personal effort, especially on a simple group task, is known as social loafing. While it is not a deliberate behavior. The consequence of social loafing is less personal efficiency when working in groups than when working on one's own. 那么咱们在大家一起工作的时候呀、啊，都会觉得 everybody's work is nobody's work。那么大家都不会去承担这样一份责任，这就叫 social loafing， 是一种啊专业名词，一个专业概念。那么咱们在知道这个概念以后呀，咱们就需要先在理解的基础上抓住一些关键词，比如说呀，抓住一些，比如说 work in groups and people feel less responsible for the consequences。那么抓住这一些关键词，并且对这个专业名词啊理解了以后呀，咱们呀审一下题，看一下题目的要求。其实我们发现呀，就是解释这样一个词 social loafing。我们还需要用到咱们听力材料中啊会出现的这样一个 example， 所以呢，在理解题目的要求和 what is social loafing 的基础上，咱们来听一下听力。Listen to part of a lecture in a psychology class. Now, a study was done that illustrated this phenomenon. In the study, people were given an ordinary task that everyone has probably done before. They were simply asked to peel potatoes. And to peel as many potatoes as possible in a given amount of time. Okay, so some people worked alone, and they were told that the number of potatoes they each peeled would be recorded. Others peeled potatoes together as part of a group, and they were told that only the total number of potatoes peeled would be recorded. So it would be impossible to tell how many any one person had done. Then researchers compared the results of the people who worked alone and those that worked together. To see if there was any difference, that is, they took the average score of the people working alone and compared it to the average score of the people working together in a group, and they did discover a difference. It turns out that people working as a group peeled significantly fewer potatoes than people who worked alone. 好的，听完听力呢，我们发现啊，咱们第一步啊需要解释 what is social loafing。那么这一部分呀、啊，主要是取决于咱们听力材料之前呀、啊、阅读材料的理解。Social loafing happens when individuals in a group perform less well than they do on their own, which leads to less personal efficiency. The professor uses study to illustrate this phenomenon. 那么过渡到直接对这个 sample 的这样一个叙述 In the study, people were asked to peel potatoes, to peel as many potatoes as possible, at a given amount of time. Salt food. Some choose to work alone and were told that the number of potatoes each peeled would be recorded. Others choose to work in a group, and they were told that only the total number of potatoes peeled would be recorded. So it was impossible to tell how many one person had done. Then the researchers compare the average number of potatoes peeled alone, and that peeled together. They found out that people who worked as a group peeled significantly fewer potatoes than those who worked alone. 那么群体效应啊，没有个人去做这件事啊，效率高，这就是啊 social loafing。嗯，咱们理解以后呀，在听听力的时候啊，一定要注意整个 research 怎么样一步一步接下来，然后达到最终这个结果的。咱们除了要说整个 process， 还要说出他们发现的这样一个结果来印证，这就是咱们需要做到的。
我们接着来看一下第十七套题的第四题，同样的也是先阅读一段材料。那我们这段材料中啊，解释这样一个词就是 ritualization。我们先来理解一下。Sociobiologists believe that some communicative behavior in animals is developed through a process called ritualization. In this process, so this is a process, right? 我们在解释名词的时候啊，一定要抓住这样一些专业的。解释的这样一些名词，描述性的名词。The purpose of a given behavior changes over time. A behavior that originally had a practical purpose develops into one that communicates a specific message. For example, a certain movement or physical feature might evolve to serve as a signal or warning that other animals will understand. Once a behavior is ritualized, it becomes a form of communication. Therefore, if an animal engages in this behavior, other animals will be able to interpret the meaning of the behavior quickly and respond appropriately. Explain the concept of ritualization using the example of dogs discussed by the professor. 我们要解释的这样一个词啊，就是 ritualization。那么知道这个词，并且有了这样一个背景资料的基础上呀，我们先来听一下听力。Now listen to part of a lecture on this topic in a zoology class. Let's start with an example you may be familiar with. What's one thing dogs typically do when they feel threatened? When they want to protect themselves? That's right, they show their teeth. And when we see this, we know this behavior means basically stay away. Now. Here's how this behavior became a recognizable warning. A long, long time ago, a dog sensing danger would get ready to bite whatever animal was threatening it. It started by baring its teeth, but the purpose of doing this was something very simple. The dog instinctively was making sure it wouldn't bite its own lips when it bit the other animal. Okay, but what happened? Other dogs, other animals, over time. They learned that this teeth baring always came before a dog was going to bite, and so they started to read it as a signal to be careful, to keep away or risk getting bitten. This scenario, repeated time after time, also led to the dog's awareness that by simply showing its teeth, a lot of the time that was protection enough. What had been a simple physical preparation to bite, had developed into a kind of defense mechanism in and of itself. The dog learned it did not need to actually attack, but could get the right result from just communicating the possibility of an attack through showing its teeth. It started to use this behavior as a warning signal. 好的，听完听力呢，我们知道我们首先要做的第一件事呢，就是解释一下 what is ritualization. Ritualization is a process in which an animal's behavior that originally serves as practical purpose. Develops into one that communicates a specific message. The professor uses dogs baring teeth as an example to explain the concept. 那么后面呢，就是对这个 example 的这样一个 summary. If dogs feel threatened, they show their teeth, meaning stay away. Before this dog's behavior becomes a recognizable warning, its original purpose is to avoid biting his own lips. When a dog senses danger, they bite and instinctively bare teeth to avoid biting their own lips. But other animals over time notice the teeth baring behavior always came before a dog's going to bite, so they started to read it as a signal to be careful. After this scenario repeated time after time, dogs themselves start to be aware that. Simply baring teeth is enough to protect themselves, so they use this behavior as a warning signal to communicate the possibility to attack rather than actually attack. 嗯，这个地方呢，就是把 example 啊叙述的非常详细，咱们也要看到整个过程啊都要非常详细的叙述出来。然后第六题呢是问你啊一个你对 lecture 里面一个词的看法。Using points and examples from the talk. Explain internal and external locus of control. 咱们要解释的就是这样两种 control。
咱们有了这样一个关键信息之后呀，还是先听听力。在听听力的时候呢，一定要注意这两种啊有什么区别，他们分别要举了一些什么例子，有条不紊的来进行叙述。好的，我们先来听一下听力。Now listen to part of a talk in a psychology class. Okay, ever thought about the things that happen to you and what's responsible for them? We psychologists have a term, locus of control. Locus of control refers to、um, where people think control over their lives comes from, whether it comes from themselves or from somewhere else. People who think that control is in themselves are internals, and people who think it comes from somewhere else are externals. Let's say there are two people going for job interviews. One of them is an internal. She has an internal locus of control. Since she thinks that control comes from within herself, she'll believe that her success and her preparation are really her responsibility. So she's likely to really work on her interview skills ahead of time. Then, if she gets the job, she'll believe that it's because she's worked so hard. And if she doesn't get it, well, she'll probably be disappointed with herself, and、uh, try to figure out how she can improve for the next time. Okay. And another job candidate is an external. He perceives other things, say his interviewers, to have more influence. After all, it's their decision. It depends on what mood they're in, and you know. Luck. Now, with his external locus of control, he's not as hard on himself, so he's more likely to take risks. He might interview for a job that he's not completely qualified for, and if he gets it, he'll think he's really lucky. And because he believes external forces are in control, he might think it's because the interviewers were having a good day. And if he doesn't get it, he'll probably blame the interviewers or bad luck, rather than look at himself and try to figure out what he could have done better. 听力过后呢，我们来参考一下这个答案。大家可以学习一下这个套路。那么首先呢，我们就要说 ，the professor uses two interviews as examples to explain internal and external locus of control. 先有一个总数性的话，那么谁做了什么样一个事情，解释了什么。In the first example, 那么分开第一种呢 ，the girl who has internal locus of control believes her success and preparation are her responsibilities, so she worked hard ahead of time. If she succeeds, she will think it's because of her hard work. If she fails, she will be disappointed and try to figure out how she can improve for the next time. Another example, 第二种呢。Is a man who has external locus of control. He thinks interviewers have more influences on his interview, which means his success depends on luck. So he didn't work hard to prepare for the interview. He is more likely to take risk, interviewing jobs that he is not qualified for. If he gets it, he thinks it's because interviewers are having a good day. If he doesn't get the job, he will blame the interviewers and won't try to figure out how he might have done better. 那么这就是两种我们通过事例啊，逐一的把它解释出来了。一定要注意条理清晰哦。那么下一个呢，我们就来看一下第十七套题的第六题。Using points and examples from the talk, explain the concept of diffusion. 我们看到啊，这个词就是我们需要解释的。而我们啊需要听的这个听力里面啊就包含对这个名词的一个解释，还有一些 examples。那我们就需要认真听，并且认真记，抓住谁做了什么，解释了什么，而且每一个事例究竟是怎样的。那么在理解的基础上呢，我们就先来听一下这道题的听力。Listen to part of a talk in a sociology class. Now let's talk about a particular cultural process: diffusion. Since the beginning of human history, diverse cultures have taken advantage of one another's innovations when they've come into contact. Diffusion is the process whereby something cultural,、uh, like a custom, a type of food, or an invention, is spread from one group to another, or from one society to another. One group adopts a cultural item, 
or uh, more selectively just part of a cultural item, of another group, you see? Now, diffusion can occur through a variety of ways, military conquest or tourism or well, even something like the influence of satellite TV shows around the world. For example, take something like reading a modern newspaper here in the U.S. Have you ever thought about where the letters, the characters on the page you're reading, where they came from? They were borrowed from another culture many centuries ago. Then the printing of the words. Well, that process was invented in Germany. And finally, the paper itself. Paper was invented in China. These innovations from all over the world were shared across cultures over time, and so today we have newspapers in the U.S. So the process of diffusion might take place over long distances and over long periods of time. Now, I'm not saying that diffusion happens easily. As I mentioned, sometimes it's selective. For instance, um, many people in the U.S. have accepted the practice of acupuncture, the Chinese practice of using needles to cure disease or relieve pain. So lots of people in the U.S. have realized that acupuncture is effective, but few of them fully understand or have committed themselves to the philosophy behind acupuncture. Cultures tend to resist ideas which seem too foreign, too different from their own beliefs and values. But the ideas which aren't perceived as too different are often incorporated, absorbed, diffused into their culture. So the practice of acupuncture has been absorbed into U.S. culture, but not the philosophies of Chinese medicine. 好的，听你听完了呢，咱们知道啊，咱们首先第一步呢要解释 what is diffusion， 这是咱们作答的第一个构成部分，这是每次都要遵循的。Diffusion is a cultural process whereby one group or society adopts another's item, such as a custom, a type of food, or an invention. Take the modern newspaper in the U.S. as an example. The characters on the page. Came from another culture many centuries ago. The printing of words was invented in Germany and paper in China. These innovations were shared across cultures over a long distance and over a long period of time. Besides, diffusion is sometimes selective. For example, people in the U.S. accept the practice of acupuncture, but few of them fully understand it. 不管呀、啊，咱们在听力中啊，听到什么样的信息，一定要注意啊。比如说 ，besides 或者是 however 这样一些联系词，提示着啊，这个说的这个人呀，可能要说到另外一个，或者是非常重要的一个细节。咱们一定要学会理解的基础上呀、啊，记一些关键词，依靠自己的顺时记忆来作答。Because cultures tend to resist ideas that are too different from their own beliefs and values. If ideas are close to their own, they will incorporate, absorb, and diffuse them. So American culture only accepts the practice of acupuncture, but not the philosophy of Chinese medicine. 我们这整个答案呀、啊，就叙述出来了。首先呢，我们要说啊，那个名词是什么。然后一个过渡性的话，比如说 ，the professor uses what example to illustrate this. 然后后面呢，就是把整个这个 sample 啊叙述出来，一定要注意抓一些连接词，提示你一些信息需要注意到了。那么以上呢，就是这一部分的全部内容呢，非常感谢大家。